Hi everyone, I'm Jim Fister. I'm an independent contractor for the Storage Networking Industry Association, uh, and I run my own company, The Decision Place. And with me today is Steve Swanson. Hey, Steve. Hey, Jim. So, uh, Steve, why don't you introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Steve Swanson. I run the Nonvolatile Systems Lab in the Computer Science and Engineering Department at the University of California in San Diego. So Steve and I are co-chairs of uh, the 2020 Pearl Conference, and uh, we're actually the creators of the Pearl Conference uh, that started in 2019. Uh, as you can tell, everything's virtual. Here I am in the uh, Oregon State Cascades Co-Innovation Lab, where Connect Central Oregon, who's our video host, uh, has been doing the recordings and running the event for us. And uh, I just wanted to get together with Steve. We uh, kicked off Pearl on Friday the uh, 16th of October, and uh, we had our first week. There were three pre-recorded sessions, and then we did a live panel session of those three pre-recorded, as well as two keynotes. I actually hosted the uh, first panel discussion, and that was with Steve Hiller, F Philip Goetze, and Shihang Luo uh, from various places. And uh, they were wrote on a various on a they spoke on a variety of topics. Steve talked about the Two Misses platform and some of the work that he had been doing there. Philip talked about graph analytics and some of the work that he had been doing on enabling persistent memory for graph analytics. And, uh, and then uh, Shi Hong was talking about low-level debugging. So Steve, I moderated. Uh, it was probably a little tricky for me to uh, you know, really catch the flow. What did you think of the three panels? Uh, I mean, I thought the, the speakers in the first panel, they all had uh, a lot of interesting stuff to say. Uh, Steve is sort of a very scrappy entrepreneur in the uh, persistent memory software space. He's been building this high performance key value store uh, and talked about it last year at Pearl as well. So it was cool to hear a, an update of that. Um, Philip Gutzi comes from a, a great group, uh, an academic research group that's built a bunch of different persistent uh, memory data structures uh, and the transactional memory system or transactional uh, graph database system they talked about is probably their most ambitious um, piece to date. So it's always in interesting to hear what they've been up to. Um, and then uh, Sihang uh, Liu from uh, UVA talked about their, their debugging work, uh, which I think is really important and interesting because there's all these new kinds of bugs that persistent memory can um, that can cause, and it's useful to be able to think about those in a, a rigorous way and then think about how to fix them. Yeah. What I thought was interesting about uh, Sihang's work was, you know, he talked about you have to know your state coming in and out, and Steve Heller actually echoed that very similarly, because he was actually talking about adding failure analysis to uh, his key value store and some of the work that he did. And, you know, not surprisingly, he came back with the conclusion of use the tools if they're available to you, but here's the in-depth things that you could do. And I thought those two played off very well. And seeing how uh, graph analytics uh, can really use a new technology like persistent memory, I thought that that was a pretty exciting uh, technology viewpoint and really shows how new persistent memory technologies are going to really revolutionize how computing is going. Now, yeah. uh, you it's moderated the set. Oh, that. sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, it's, it's always interesting to see uh, the range of different applications where persistent memory is, uh, turns out to be useful. Yeah, and, and on that, uh, you actually moderated the second session. So that was with Doug Hood from Oracle. So what was Doug talking about? Uh, Doug was talking about how they have integrated persistent memory into their Times 10 database system, uh, which is a... Uh, uh, very highly optimized, very high performance, you know, um, industrial grade uh, transaction system. And what I thought was cool there was, you know, even though Oracle has spent uh, years and years making their uh, system go as fast as possible, that persistent memory was still uh, a pretty big win, even in sort of the initial proof of concept uh, design that they threw together for a demo in just a couple of months. Um, and then some of the things he talked about were the, the changes they were going to make going forward to, to refine that more and integrate the persistent memory even more deeply into the, into the design while still re re retaining backward compatibility with their um, kind of legacy uh, storage systems that they also support. Yeah, I would agree. You know, what I, 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 I'll echo what you said. What I thought the most interesting thing was, you know, Time 10 is such this highly optimized piece of software. It's an in-memory database. 
and they took on a challenge in two months to be able to implement uh, different uh, tests and benchmarks to be able to see how it worked. And they actually implemented persistent memory in a variety of ways. They implemented it both in uh, App Direct mode uh, as well as persistent memory mode to be able to test some of the different results. And I thought that was an interesting talk, talking about some of the surprising conclusions they came to. You know, what we really try and do at Perl is talk about what's hard and what's easy about persistent memory. It's a, it's a conference for developers to really talk about development. And uh, I thought that was a great uh, example of how everything worked. And then the third one we had, I, th I thought was also equally entertaining. It was uh, Charles Fan from the startup Memverge. And Charles was talking about using his experience in virtualization coming from VMware and building a virtual application platform that other applications could use for persistent memory. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of that. We're going to see a lot of tools for persistent memory and middleware for persistent memory come on. And those things will then make it easier for a broad base of applications to come on. What did you get out of the presentation? I, I was excited to hear more about what Memverge has been doing. I've been sort of watching them for a while, and it was cool to hear some more detail about uh, what they're trying to do. I thought um, you know, that the idea of tiering that he talked about and sort of virtualizing uh, persistent memory to enable large memory applications was really interesting, and, and I think pretty well in line with sort of the, the main use case we've been seeing for these kinds of memories, which is kind of in the big big memory space rather than necessarily the persistent space. He talked a little bit about the persistence story. And you know, I think he uh, they're trying to make it very transparent, which is a, a very noble goal. Um, but they've, they've still got a few things to work out yet, right? And these are the kinds of challenges that we're dealing with uh, everywhere. You know, what does it mean to make a whole application um, persistent or to take a snapshot of the heap and the stack and then deal with all the transient state that comes along with it? Uh, but they seemed, I, I was, they were surprisingly optimistic that it was going to, uh, that they were going to be able to make it work, which is pretty encouraging because that's, the more we can make it transparent, the easier it's going to be to adopt. Um, and that also means the more interesting use cases people will find for persistent memory. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, for those of you that are interested in viewing the Perl conference, uh, you will be able to access that. You can go to perl.nvsl. Dot io, and that's the uh, Perl website. And from there, uh, we can give you pointers to, you can look at the blog, you can get pointers to some of the video content that we have. You can also go to the YouTube channel and check out the Perl video channel on YouTube, P-I-R-L, and uh, you can find these and all the other presentations available there. We look forward to delivering more exciting content. Stay tuned for week two and week three of the 2020 Pearl Conference, and feel free to scale back and look at the 2019 Pearl Conference. Thanks everyone for watching the video today.